And there are dark warnings about rising unemployment this autumn when the Chancellor says his furlough scheme designed to protect jobs during the COVID-19 pandemic must come to an end. That's in October. But what about people in the UK who are now in the process of being made redundant or who have already lost their job? Today we'll get job figures from the Office of National Statistics and Dan Baker is one of the faces behind the statistics. A 36-year-old theatre producer based in Plymouth on furlough since March, he told me earlier he was going to be made redundant in the autumn. I am definitely losing my job, unfortunately. Um, Due to the COVID pandemic, it's put a lot of pressure on the cultural sector and my job is one of those in my organisation that is uh, unfortunately being made redundant. And, I mean, of course, you come from a sector that's been very badly hit, I mean, the entertainment sector. Did you think this might be coming or or has this come as a shock? At the time, I was told that hopefully there wouldn't be redundancies. But, of course, as time passed and we saw the reality of the situation, it was always in my mind that there was a possibility that there would be redundancies. And, unfortunately for me, uh, that was the case. So how has that made you feel and... What action have you been taking or will you now take? I'm serving my notice until October, so I've got a three-month notice period, which gives me time to weigh out my options and consider other employments. But that's very complicated because my whole sector is is really struggling. You know, the back to our union have announced there have been 5,000 job losses uh, this year, and that's up by 2000, literally just from July in the case of a month. So in terms of employment op- opportunities, they are very limited. So whether I can find work in the sector that I've been working in for 20 years, I, I don't know. So I'm looking for work in, in my field, but also I'm having to consider the options of, of finding other work so I can keep paying my mortgage and I can survive. And we're about to hear how many people apply for just one vacancy when it comes up. Uh, For now, Sean, thank you. Let's talk to a couple of people who know exactly how tough it is out there. Rachel Foster recently discovered she's going to be made redundant from her job at the Birmingham Repertory Theatre. And Daryl Spari is co-founder of the digital marketing consultancy Hard Numbers. Welcome to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Rachel, let's start with you. I'm really sorry. When when did you find out you were going to be losing your job? So um, um, I I was furloughed back in March. Obviously, I work in a theatre. Um, the live entertainment industry has been hit very hard during the coronavirus. So it became apparent um, that, yeah, that was going to be furloughed in March. And then the theatre started a consultation process um, it was the middle of June, um, and uh, yes, it became evident that uh, that I was going to lose my job, like many other people in our industry and and in in that theatre. Um, so uh, we've just gone through that consultation process. Um, I'm actually also a union representative for the uh, for the theatre, um, a, a back to union representative. So I've actually been assisting people through the process whilst furloughed in my home. Um, so that that was something I felt very very that was very important. Um, but uh, yes, I now know that um, that I'm going to lose my job. So I will be uh, losing my job at the end of October. Um, and uh, obviously, in that industry, it's going to be um, incredibly difficult to find another job. Certainly in that sector. Mm, what did you do for for the company? Um, so yeah, I mean, I've so for for the Birmingham Repertory Theatre, I've I've worked for the company for uh, it would have been my thirtieth year last year, and I've worked in the uh, in the sector for thirty five years. Um, so my actual role at the moment was um, I was one of four assistant theatre and sales managers. So very much customer facing um, box office and front of house. Well, obviously, we've had no performances. We've had no performances since March. So um, unfortunately, um, yeah, I'm not able to welcome our audiences um, and our customers at the moment. And until the government uh, give us clear guidelines about when that can happen and and, and when people feel confident to come back to the theatre, um, then I, I, we're going to struggle because um, uh, theatres can't open with social distancing. And, and, and I think there's a lot of uncertainty in the industry that people... Um, uh, 
are going to feel confident in coming back and feel safe. So until that happens, um, I think a lot of theatres aren't probably going to be looking at being functioning until probably the next financial year. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's I mean, is there anything the government could have done? I mean, they did give this date of mid-November, didn't they, or November at the earliest before they have any idea what would happen with with theatres and performance spaces. I mean... Is there just no way around the fact that you are putting people cheek by jowl in an enclosed space for several hours at a time and the virus would spread in that situation? I know. I think. I think. I think. As, as you know, in our industry, those of us who work in it just don't kind of understand really the logic, um, why that's different, why a theatre is different from an aeroplane. Um, you know, we don't really understand. It's not really being made clear why it's so different. Why, if if good hygiene um, is attended to in venues and people wear masks, um, that you know people can't be in um, those. Um, spaces. You know, people are travelling on their holidays on aeroplanes and sitting next to each. other. Other. And and yet theatres are, are almost being marked as being dangerous. And if they're being marked as dangerous places, then obviously p- people's confidence is knocked, and um, and and people are perhaps aren't going to feel totally safe in coming back just yet. So um, mm. yeah.